Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sidina Muhammadin Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi fi kuli lahzatin abada ala ni'amillahi wa afdalihi Allahumma atina miladunka rahmah wa alimna miladunka ilma Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana Innaka antal alimul hakim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نوينا تعلم وتعليم وتذكر وتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الخدى ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن نسلك العلم لدني يا مشرب السفير هني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إن نسلك العلم لدني يا مشرب السفير هني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إن نسلك العلم لدني يا مشرب السفير هني يا وهاب يا غني وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ألهمنا علما نفقه به أوامرك ونواهيك وارزقنا فهما نعرف به كيف ناجيك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن نسلك فهم النبيين وحفظ المرسلين وإلهام الملائكة المقربين في عافية يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اللهم أغنى بالعلم وزينا بالحلم وأكرم بالتقى وجملنا بالعافية يا أرحم الراحم آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إن استوديعك ما قرأناه ما نقرأه في هذا المجلس ما قبله وما بعده فاحفظه علينا حتى ترده إلينا وقت احتياجنا إليه يا أرحم الراحم اللهم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وافتح لنا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا حكمتك يا أرحم الراحم آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم يا من وقل الأمور كلها بيده وإليه يرجع الأمر كله يا فتاح يا عالم يا فتاح يا عالم يا فتاح يا عالم افتح علينا فتحا قريبا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العذر من سني يفقه قولي وصل لساني وهدي قلبي وفعل كذلك بأحبابي أبدا وارزقنا كمال فتوح العارفين والثق في الدين مع كمال إخلاص السلق اليقين والعافية وغنى والنسر والحفظ والنفع والانتفاع وخير الدارين وعلوم الأولين والآخرين آمين وصل الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين الحمد لله الفاتحة الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله, الحمد لله. Alhamdulillah, uh, we are continuing. Uh, in, we are continuing for our etiquettes. Uh, so he, as we as mentioned right, in this uh, in this book, as how as how, as how we see in most of Islamic texts, they will begin with aqidah, they will go into Sharia, right, into fiqh, uh, which we went through, and then they will go into adab, uh, adab uh, etiquettes as well as uh, inward purification of the heart, and all three of these are compulsory. I in all this, all these are compulsory for every Muslim to to uh, to learn and to know. Right. So whatever we are going through in the glorious treasure, it is all fardu'ain. And fardu'ain meaning that it is um specified on every Muslim. Right? Every Muslim must know these knowledges. Right? of course the du'as that come into on the etiquettes, these are all under sunnah. Right? but it is uh, recommended that the Muslim uh, knows these things because it helps them in their path to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right? All this in assistance. On a path to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and so we have come to the etiquettes in the. Eh, is there a different, different. Get there on. I open the different. Do I before sleep? Do I wake up entering the house? Call to prayer. Rising for majlis. Okay, it was last week, and eh? so last week on the duas. Eh, yes, it, ah, I just remembered. Someone shared with me. Uh, on so now I remember <laughs> someone shared with me on on uh, that, they, that they actually made this dua for uh, istinja 
uh, they made it into a poster, something like that. Right? So that so that people can memorize right? and can um, implement this dua. Right? So it, and as mentioned, this is a very is a very important dua uh, in our time, especially in our time, because it's really if if you know the statistics of um, how young people get into indecencies and then how it can be a, it can be a terrible affliction or an um, a terrible uh, 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 addiction right, on human beings right? and, and and mashallah you know as muslims we understand that we are created for a higher purpose right? we are not created to satisfy our own lusts or to, to satisfy our own shahwa, our own desires. Right? Higher than that. Right? So, I mean, we, we, are, we are beings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He created the human being from the angels, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed the angels that the human beings, they are capable of knowledge. Right? They can learn and they can, uh, and they can, they can be even better than the angels as we see the prophets are. Right? And they have higher, they, they, they have higher um, goals in life and higher, and higher purposes and higher concerns. Uh, in life, then to have you know, then to have their concerns be on things that are uh, so lowly as as as, as, as these things. Uh, so, mashallah, you know, and even like, like for example, uh, there's a story that there is a, there's a statement of Sayyidina Umar, not Yallahu anhu. And not to say that, that these things are, are wrong or right, right, but Sayyidina Umar has a statement right, whereby he said that you know, if you went for having more children, he would have no time for marriage, right, Sayyidina Umar. Because for them, it's not about their shahwat. Of course, you know, it's natural for human beings to have their shahwat. Right, but, but for them, they have so many things to do <laughs> in life. There are a lot of concerns right, to, to, to handle. Um, and then for him, it's just a matter of he wants to have more children. Right, more children, why? Because more of the Ummah of Rasulullah Alaihi Wasallam, more people at his, you know, that, that, that he can tarbi yeah, that he, that he can he can uh, raise right, to be in service of the religion. You know, Sayyidina Umar said that. Sayyidina, Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz, who is his grandson, right, grandson, Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz, right, uh, of a descendant of Sayyidina Umar, he, when he became a Khalifa, right, uh, Sayyidina Umar, Umar, Habib Umar, mashallah, right, Habib Umar said that when, when Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz became a Khalifa, and he, is, he, he has been identified to be the sixth righteous caliph. Right, because you have four, I say na Abu Bakr, say na Omar, say na Uthman, say na Ali. Then you say na Hassan. I say na Hassan also of the is the fifth uh, righteous caliph. And later on, you have say na Omar bin Abdul Aziz, who is of the descendants say na Omar al Khattab. Uh, so uh, say na Omar bin al Khattab. I right, so <laughs> have it mentioned one of his cousins lah. And he is on the part of Janaba and so and Mandi Janaba, you know, bathing the wajib bath and everything. And he says say na Omar bin Abdul Aziz when he became a Khalifa. He only like Mandi Junub twice in the entire year, the whole year, because he's so busy. And then Habib was saying, there's no time, because he's so busy in being a Khalifa, uh, in, in handling the affairs of the Muslims. That's how Sayyidina Omar also said right, that, uh, that he has no time to sleep, Sayyidina Omar, you know, mashallah. Because if, you know, if, if, if Omar sleeps in the day, he said, if Omar sleeps in the day, the people will be lost. And if Omar sleeps at night, then Omar will be lost. And so Omar, Omar needs his time with the people in the day, and Sayyidina Omar needed his time with Allah at night. So then there's no time right, for him to for him to actually fall asleep. These are people of you know, of course they they are, they are mashallah people lah. Right? <laughs> they are high people with high uh, concerns and high high goals in life. They have they they they, they are focused on the akhirah, and then we all at least we don't be obsessed. Right, with what is um, with what is lowly, uh, at the very least, right? These are things that are part of life, like food. Right, food is part of life. Don't be obsessed about food. <laughs> it's just it's there. <laughs> right, it's there. You eat it. Right, it's nice. You, you praise Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for it. The Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallam in doing that. Right, but to have your entire life, you know, revolve around this. Right, that is, you know, to question lah, to ask yourself, you know, why is your is is your life, you know, revolving around the sh- your, your your own nafs, your own shahwa, right? Sleep, you know, food, uh, uh, any sexual form of shahwa, right? Even your whole life revolving around what people think of you and say of you and, and do this to you and whatsoever, and then you lose sight of what is important in life, and that's Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and what Allah loves. Right? So when we do take the pleasures of this dunya that is halal. Uh, and that is of the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, he does take the pleasures of this dunya that is halal. Right, he will praise Allah subhanahu wa taala, and Allah loves that when His servant takes, uh, you know, a morsel, like a swap, like a morsel of food, he praises Allah subhanahu wa taala, and when His servant takes a sip of drink, he praises Allah subhanahu wa taala. Alhamdulillah.
I see. Okay. Uh, so and, and, and that is from and then when he wears something that a clothing that is nice, he praises Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And all of these things we learn, you know, from the adab and from the etiquette of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you don't live your life unaware, you know, and you don't live your life unattached. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every time you see, and, and, and it's for us as human beings, that, that, that you know, is the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? That when he, you know, and we went to the dua, when he took a sip of drink, right, or a sip of water, right, he, he praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in being, in being in a position or in a state of, be, of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even something like just drinking cold water itself, or just the, the ni'mah eh, of cold water itself is a door to getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, it's, a, it's a matter of your state it's really a matter of your state now, some of my students have asked me like, how is it that we feel far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and, and when we ask our teachers uh, they say how is it that you don't feel close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, when all around you is from Him it's all gifts from Him so how is it that you feel far uh, it means you are, you are in a state of complete heedlessness uh, or in a state of complete and you're not, you're not aware of all the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you can you know there, so there are people who drink you know uh, this is just water itself it can be an entire spiritual experience it's water itself you say mashallah and the ni'mat of water the ni'mat of uh, of fruits the ni'mat of uh, of of companionship the ni'mat of uh, of clothing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so many so much ni'mah in life and by and by the door of shukr, a person gets close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are in the ni'mat of uh, being able to go to the toilet. <laughs> it's all ni'mat. Everything is all ni'mat. Right? Because it's, it's, can you imagine if it's not there? There's a story of a man, right, whereby, uh, my mom told me a story a long time ago, right, whereby uh, this man, he had some sort of um, issues with his bowels. Right? So he went to the, to the hospital right, to get treated. Right, and and in getting treated, right, he got his bill after that. Right? So basically, like the, like his his rectum or the muscles or whatsoever couldn't expel um, the the filth the, the nudges that was inside of him. Right. So so they uh, he went to the, do- to, the, to the doctors and then they did an operation on him whatsoever and then they managed to uh, f- uh, have his uh, system work again, but with with assistance with a lot of other you know. Um, uh, uh, machines and all that kind of things lah, right, in the uh, in the hospital. Right, so Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, so it, so it, the man, right, this 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 person, right, this man, right, he Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, so it, so this uh, person when he got when he got uh, the bill, <laughs> right, after all of that operation, right, Allah uh, he saw in the bill, right, that it cost ten thousand dollars his operation. And then he began to weep. And he's actually a rich man. And he began to weep. And then uh, the doctor said, um, the doctor, doctor said to him, no, you know, are, you, are you weeping because you're, going, you're having, are you weeping because you are afraid that you can't pay for this, for this amount? You know, or are you weeping because it's too expensive? You can go and get such a this for you. And the man said, no, I am weeping because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, <laughs> for the past 50 years of my life, he has allowed for my bowels to, to work uh, well, without any bill, <laughs> he never charged me for it. And now it's at one time I, I need, you know, help in my bowels, and I get I get charged ten thousand dollars right for it. And so and then he was weeping out shukr to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Something as simple as going to the toilet, right? and something as simple as uh, as knowing how to istinja. Right? What our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has taught us, even through the hadith, right? that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh, that, that, that the Sahaba said. That our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us everything, even how to go to the bathroom. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So there is, there's a ni'mah lah, a ni'mah on knowing how to do all of these things. Teach it, taught, taught to us by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillah. Right. So let me see. We're here. Okay. Um, to use the stone uh, is a sunnah. Right. Did I put in the sh- the sharat? I didn't go through the sharat. Eh. The conditions of using toilet roll. No, I didn't put in the conditions. Let me just put in the conditions. I don't know if online you all can hear the noise in the <laughs> background. <laughs> I, I I hope it's the it's not noisy online. When I use when I use the mic, it's noisy to us here. But I think the computer is those who are on Zoom. It's not noisy, right? because uh, because it's a direct direct to my voice. But the kids are making a lot of noise <laughs> in the hall. 
Allahumma salli ala sidina Muhammad We cannot hear <laughs> what's going on here <laughs> There Wait a minute, where am I? Here Okay. 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 This we will learn actually later on in other fiqh books, but because it's something that uh, many Singaporeans go through, I so I, I see that it's important for us to do it now, lah. Right? And because um, especially if you're, you're if you're sending your kids to school, and then um, to secular school especially, and if let's say Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. <laughs> Okay, if uh, if if and let's and if let's say right that you send your kids to secular school and then they they find toilet roll, right? So you need to teach them how to use it. Right? If they forget to bring their water bottle, they forget to bring a bottle right for istinja and everything. And if I'm not wrong, I saw somewhere online that they sell these beaded bottles. I can't I can't remember where I saw, but I, it was some advertisement lah eh, online. <laughs> Yeah, right. There was this um, bottle, and then there's like a spout that comes out that can you can squeeze, and the thing will, like a, like a hose lah. It's like a hose. I tried to to buy it, but I couldn't buy it. I don't know why. <laughs> I had to search for it because it is useful to just carry around this, and then it, it, it is collapsible. Like in a sense, you can you can you can you can fold it. It's made of silicon or something, so you can fold it and keep it in your bag. Right. So I think if you, if you, especially go and find it, eh? <laughs> go and search for it. <laughs> right. They actually made it, and then so if you can find you can find it, and then you can buy it for your children, especially in school. Right. So they know right that uh, when they go to the toilet in school, at least they can they can istinja properly. Uh, in the toilet because using the toilet roll has conditions uh, there are shurut for the toilet roll the first sharat uh, the first condition for it to be sah tau, right? so this is in a condition whereby you have no water at all right? so no water at all you most places have toilet roll and right? um, if you don't have toilet roll so then then you can find something uh, to wipe yourself because otherwise the nudges is still there Right, so to use the the first the shurut eh that the, the, the conditions for toilet roll. The first condition is that it must be dry. So which means that and, I, and I'm gonna put in in bracket when I put uh in bracket, which means I put an X because usually usually whenever we learn fake again, when we learn a condition, we will we will we'll also mention what it is not. Right, so as to make it clear to people right, what you cannot do, and also to mention what is the common mistakes that people fall into. So, like for example, when we say you know uh, standing in the prayer right, is of the shurud of the prayer of the condition of the prayer, you must stand in the prayer. So, what you cannot do right, is to, um, to 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 begin your ta- you, to begin your takbiratul ihram when you are still on your way up. Uh, like common mistakes people might make, right? so or when you're still walking, you know, even you're not standing yet, you must stand if your back straight, right? and the back must be straight as straight as you can make it. So if a person, you know, is can't can lean forward, you know, or can you know lean to the to the, to the side, or or there are, there are things whereby you can say about it, right? So you can say what is it not, right? So the 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 stone or bracket toilet roll in our time, right, must be dry. So which means that cannot wet it. Cannot wet it. I uh, not uh, cannot. I just put the put bracket. I don't put the X away lah. Eh. <laughs> it's really confusing anti. I cannot wet it. I not uh, wet wipes. Okay, cannot wet it. Not wet wipes. I know some students have uh, asked me what if you they wet the toilet roll so much until it's soaked in water, and then they carry this to the toilet, then they squeeze it. And they squeeze it, you know, um, onto their private parts, and then they the, the water that, that drips out, they use it for istinja. Okay, if you are able to 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 have enough water for that, I don't know how that works. <laughs> like because it's such a, is it enough water that can be can that can be soaked by a by a wad of toilet paper that is enough to istinja? I still, I still, I still wonder <laughs> like whether that is possible. But if if it's possible, it means you're not you're not using the toilet paper, but you're using it to carry water. So you're not using it to wipe yourself, but you are using it to squeeze out the water and the drops of water. You use that <laughs> for istinja. If that is possible, I don't know whether that works well. Then that will count under istinja. It's not under istijmar. It is under istijmar. Istijmar is basically using stone. 
right? So, so if you want to use this uh, hukum of using stone or using toilet roll, then if you're using the, the toilet roll itself to wipe yourself, it must be dry. Okay, the toilet roll must be dry. You cannot use wet ones, right? And number two, right? Um, the najis, right? Cannot uh, be mixed with water or other najis. Some books you will see this as two points, but I put it as one point. Right, other nudges. Basically, the nudges that comes out of you cannot be mixed with anything else. So if both nudges came out, right, both types, right, the, the fluid and the uh, and the solid ones, and they mix together, you must use water already. So the moment any of these conditions uh, don't they, they they're not met, you must already use water. And this, if you use if you use solid roll, it's not sah. Uh, it's not sah to use solid roll. Right. So if it's not sah. Then you say how? <laughs> what if it's ready mixed? What if got water ready? Like what if you know? Yeah, I think the kids are having a lot of, <laughs> um, a lot of fun. Who is playing there? Who is playing there? Can you all be a bit quiet? No more, Alisa. And quiet. Okay. Okay. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> okay, so if any of these conditions are not met, then you cannot use the rule, you must use water. So if you say what if what if it already happened in that way? Right? And then so the conditions are not met. Then you say you use solid roll, but in a sense, you're not clean. So if you go and play, pray later on, then your prayer is more of hormat waktu. Right? It is something whereby you pray because you have to pray, but you have to uh, carve out the prayer because you were not clean at the point of prayer. Right? But you have no choice because you cannot find water. Uh, so it's under the, the conditions of those who can't find, can't find water. Lah. So they have nudges on their body. They pray with the nudges. I, but later on, when they are able to, um, to to clean themselves properly, they must redo the prayer. I, so that is, if, if that ever happens, ah, you never know. If you, you go, you go, you go um, aeroplane, you travel around. You never know, like how, like sometimes if because it's so it's so crammed in the cubicle, right? Is that even when you go to the toilet in the aeroplane or in, in, in other places, that the nudges confirm it will mix, like all at the third point, eh? Doesn't always happens, right? Uh, the nudges, the nudges cannot go, cannot uh, um, smear or go la, smear or uh, splash to other parts of the body, right? And here, take note, uh, uh, particularly, particularly. The thighs. When I was searching it some time ago, my student asked me like, like, how is that possible? <laughs> like, 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 is he, is it's only supposed to come out from where it comes out from, and not touch any other part of the body, because the moment it touches another part of the body, like your thighs or your legs or anywhere else, then you must use water already to wash that part. Uh, that part must be used. Must have you must use water. So you know. So they say, how is this possible? It's possible if uh, you are squatting. As mentioned before, I think I mentioned before in this class, it's possible to do that if you are squatting. Let me change this part and put it aside. Here. Okay. Uh, so it's possible if you are squatting. And squatting again, the last you mentioned um, that if you are squatting, uh, they say, but what it was splash. <laughs> It was the the, the nudges might splash back. Right. In the past, it used to be um, on. They used to do it on sand, not on ceramic. We all do on ceramic. Right. So all all much have a lot of issues there. <laughs> and you're wondering when is this possibly sa? <laughs> right. Uh, but these are all the conditions. These are the conditions of um, the conditions of of being able to use uh, stones. Then number four. I can't remember if I did this before with this class. <laughs> this is much fake class. I can't remember which class I did what. Right? But um, in my revision, eh? revision, hafal, eh? can hafal. Because memorize is because when you when you go, um, you never know. Right? When you go to a place whereby you are basically you have no water, 
right? And then you have no bottle. And then you went to the toilet ready. And you read the early, you know, um, uh, uh, you have done your business. Then you are now stuck. <laughs> you don't know what to do. And there's water, and there's, 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 there's a toilet roll there. And just always make sure before you do anything, just look inside and see got water or not, got gayung or not, got, you know, is there a bottle somewhere? And I really want to see if anybody can find the bidded thing, <laughs> the bidded bottle. It looks so convenient, but I, just, I tried to buy it, but I couldn't buy it. I don't know why. Okay. Um, Alright. So, it cannot, okay, so the uh, uh, toilet roll I, or the stone, I right, cannot be something sacred right it cannot be something sacred right so of course not uh, the, the the pages of a uh, of, of, of an Islamic book of course not right not the pages of uh, any like sacred knowledge right so you can use um, this this pieces of paper right for this number five right is that must have minimum three clean um okay must must wipe sorry must wipe minimum three times each time clean each time with a clean surface okay right so minimum so if anything less than three tak sah it's not it's not valid must be minimum three so either three different um, tissue papers, uh, for example, three different uh, folds of tissue, or three different stones, or three different parts right, of, a, of a stone, three different faces of a stone. It means each time the surface must be clean. Uh, and then you wipe it in that way. Right? Because sometimes I, when, I, when I was learning this, I was wondering, is it possible right, to have a stone with three surfaces and then use each part uh, to wipe yourself without touching the najis that's already there? <laughs> And also, eh? it's like, it's, it sounds very difficult because once you touch, then your hand must be washed. Then you have no water, <laughs> and then it is it's, it's, it is difficult, lah. Right? So you have three different stones or three different tissue papers. But if you say you have like a tissue paper, um, that's quite thick. So you wipe, then you unfold it and you fold the other way, and then so now it's clean on the other side. If it's clean, if if the if the wetness went through, then dah, it's not clean. Right, but if it's clean, <laughs> then you go the other way. Allah alam. Maybe it's easier for men. <laughs> I think for women, much um, I think women very difficult. Eh? Women. Then somebody asked me, but women like how is it possible to urinate and it doesn't go to your thighs? Right. That means for women, all the time must use water. Is I think the only time it's possible is when you're squatting. When you're really squatting, like like it doesn't touch you at all. Allah alam. And sorry for the graphic <laughs> the description right? but to understand so that we know that when we go to the toilet because mashallah when I was in school secondary school or JC I said, so many of I would, I would say I would, I would say majority of the Muslims who came to school have no idea when using tissue is sah or not sah right? they, no clue right? so, so when they're using tissue all the time then they go out they take wudu they pray I, and then, and then they just consider that prayer as as I mean, Alhamdulillah they pray lah. You know, Alhamdulillah if our, our students, our, our children in school pray for secondary school and JC and poly and so on, university all all these are situations. Right? But but when you learn all these conditions, you're thinking how many how many of us actually knew this <laughs> when we were in school? Right? And then and then you, and then you, you go to the toilet, you know, in school and everything. And you just you know, half the time, then didn't use water, use tissue and everything. And you're wondering how many prayers are <laughs> back then. <laughs> no, mashallah, may Allah help us. May Allah have, uh, have mercy on us and forgive us. Alhamdulillah. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, so, it must wipe a minimum of three times each time for a clean surface. Anything than three times is not sah. If at the third time, right, so let me just put a footnote a note here, right. Um, if at the third wiping, it is still not clean. That means the surface does not come out clean. Uh, if there is something there, then you must increase. It's wajib to increase. Right, then, wajib to, wajib to uh, increase to, uh, until, uh, increase until, uh, the surface right, comes out clean. Right, the surface of the tissue. 
teach your children eh, all these things. <laughs> no, no, if, if ever they have to use tissue paper, you never know. Right? Especially when they grow older. Right? So if ever this happens, and teach them. Um, even if your kids are in madrasa, right? Because madrasa, of course, there's water there, right? So alhamdulillah, right? But you never know when they go out, right? and then and then they go, you know, uh, malls or whatsoever, and then and then they are, they are already teenagers. <laughs> they don't know, like, do they know what to do, right? Uh, in the situation, okay. So then, what to increase, uh, increase number of wipings, increase the wipings. And until the surface of the tissue comes out clean, so you get new tissue each time. Right? Um, it's sunnah to Allah to do it uh, an odd number of times. Okay, so to do it an odd number of times. So, like for example, at a third wiping, you see still got like some um, other there, there is some filth right on the tissue. So you get a new one and you wipe again, and then you look. You see that it is um, if it's dry, and so now it's clean. And the fourth wiping, then it came out clean. And if it came out still got something there, you must still wipe. Eh? So so until it comes out clean, and then it's completely clean. So then it is sunnah for you to do a fifth time to make it odd number. Right? It's sunnah to do a fifth time, even though the fourth time they're clean already. It's sunnah to do a, to do it a fifth time. Right? That is number five. Right? Um, okay. Right, uh, the okay, the the number six, the najis cannot have dried, right, or must not have dried. Okay, cannot have dried. <laughs> Sounds so weird. Right? Must not have dried. Okay, the najis must not have dried. Right, so it can't be like. I don't know how this will happen. <laughs> right, but maybe and whenever you say I don't know how it will happen, it will happen to you after that. <laughs> and sometimes I, when I learn fake, I'm like, how is this possible? And then and then it happens. And you're like, oh okay. <laughs> and you say it, then Allah make it happen to you. <laughs> and that's what I and mashallah, I learned so many uh, masala of uh, of menses and, and nifas when I was in Tarim. Then menses, I think almost every masala has happened. <laughs> To me, I, but nifas because I've not I've not experienced nifas yet. But um, just the other day, one of my uh, my sister in laws, right, one of them asked uh, a masala, and it happened to her. It actually happened to her, and then and then she said, "This happened to me. You know, it's so weird." <laughs> and then she told me, "These days I got my 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 nifas, and I finish, and then you know after that, this number of days happened." Then came out uh, blood again. What is the second blood? That to her. Okay, the one, the one, the one normal. So I told her that the one is actually menses because it already passed seventeen days. Uh, even though it's still been three days. So I told her that it's menses. And then after that, like it came out only for three days and disappeared. And then after that, and then, and then she, she gave me like, like a whole masala. And I say, wow, you're the first one to give me this masala. I've never heard this masala in my life. <laughs> like, but I've I've learned it. I study this masala. Like, but you're the first one. <laughs> and then she and then she said. And then she said, uh, she saw on it <laughs> to be the first one to have that masala, you know, of, of like, like really the message ended and then in three days it appeared again. And then it ended and then it appeared again. And it ended, then it ended with white and it appeared again. And so I was like, mashallah, I didn't know, I, I didn't think uh, people actually went through this. I mean, of course they, they went through it because the, the, the ulama, when they write down all these rulings, people must have gone through it and have come up to them. And then ask them about it, and then so they give they give the uh, the rulings, you know, uh, of this. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad. The najis must not have uh, must not have dried. It's number six, number seven. I see there are a lot of questions coming up, and I see the session ten, the ten questions coming up. But I I will answer in a while. Let me just finish all the conditions. I right, say so it must not have dried. Let's see. So it must be dry, cannot be wet. Um. So the stone, eh? The stone must be dry. Sorry, here. Need stone. Stone bracket slash tissue. It right, must be dry. The nudges cannot mix with water or other nudges. The nudges cannot smear or splash to other parts of splash to other parts of the body. Uh, toilet roll cannot be something sacred. Um, so not food. Eh, no use food. Uh, uh, like last week you told a story of the the woman who used the. Did I tell a story here? The woman who used the the, the bread. Oh, I told the kids the story. <laughs> right, the story there's a story, it's a real story in, in Tarim um, of a woman who was uh sh- who had no shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She was very rich. And yeah, it was the kids because the reaction was was really loud reaction. Like, they said, eee. Right, but uh, I think it was the kids who told the story. 
um, what happened was that this woman, she, and it's a true story, how Kawabariam told the story to us, that in that image, she was a rich woman, right, and, uh, and, and very ungrateful. So, so, it, uh, uh, so, so there was once her baby had defecated, right, and she, she was too lazy to go and bring the baby to the bathroom to be, um, you know, to be washed, right, to be wiped and to be washed. Right. So, she used a piece of bread that she had, wasteful, eh? and then she wiped the baby's um, bottom with the bread. And that is, is, is so haram on so many levels, how haram that is. Because uh, one thing waste, of course, you know, uh, not, even, not, even, not even honoring the ni'mah Allah has given you by doing that. It's, it's rizki, it's food. Right? To the point that our scholars, you know, don't, you, you don't, like, you don't walk over food. Right? They get very upset. When people like, you put food on the floor and the safra, and people walk over the food. And last week I was I was uh, like I had to go to the kids uh, Then when you put your bags on the floor, if you've got Quran, don't put don't put your bag on the floor. Right? And have it sit up. You know, if you have no place to put it up high, then have it sit up. But if you, if it's and if someone's bag is on the floor, don't langka the bag. I right? don't walk over the bag. Right? Because you don't know what books are in there. And what if there is like hadith in there, Quran, you know, they don't know of fiqih in the back. We, we, we really, when we were, you know, in, 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 in uh, Darul Zahra, like we never lanka over things. We never walk over things. Right? You always walk around it. Right? It's, all, it's all adab, you know, adab of, of knowing how to handle yourself. Right? So, but basically the story was that when she did that, right, immediately, uh, immediately, as if Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you know, uh, was teaching her a lesson. Uh, immediately, she uh, it was said that there was a fire or something uh, that caused for her entire house and all that was in it to be destroyed. All of it was destroyed, uh, and she she was saved, right? But she lost everything that she had. So and then she and then she uh, and all the food was destroyed. So she was looking around for food and she was hungry and, and days passed by and she was and she was she went into starvation and. She went to like a, a, like to her house. She was searching for food, and she couldn't find anything to eat except for the bread that she used to wipe her baby. You know, it's as if Allah is teaching her a lesson. I right? don't do that. Right? This is this is so wrong to do. Right? So then she found the bread that had that she that had nudges on it, and she had no choice because she was starving. Then she went to eat. You know, try to pick out the bread, the parts that was uh, still edible, and she ate from there. Right? So it was this. Uh, it's a lesson, lah. And for us not to, so of course, it has to be something that is sacred. Food is sacred. Now you don't, you can't use food or you know to 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 to, to wash yourself. Of course not. Um, the najis must not have dried. Uh, let's see. Do I then miss anything? Allahumma salli ala sidina Muhammad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Okay. You might find in some books they put eight conditions, but because my the conditions here, I think I mixed, I mixed up, I mixed together, not mixed up, I mixed together some of the conditions, right? That uh, I need to. Then. Okay. And that I need to that, that I I mix them together lah, basically. <laughs> Since it's coming out to be eight, okay. Yeah, correct. Okay, so when you go to the bathroom, cannot be okay. Tak mam. Alhamdulillah. Okay, you continue. Continue the power class. Let me just see the questions. There have many questions a bit today. Um, let's see. Ah, uh, there someone found a bit of bottle. <laughs> Can go and check on the on the chat if you want to see this. Allahumma salli ala sidina Muhammad. Okay, the first question is the adab of studying online. Adab of studying online is the same adab as studying um, in person, right? So, adab of studying online, make sure your aura is covered as far as possible. Um, be in, in, in wudu as far as possible. Use your siwa. Uh, if you can face the blood, face the kiblat. Um, if, and then focus when you are studying. Have your notebook in front of you. Uh, write down notes, everything. Like, so, it's, 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 as, it's as if you are um, it's as if you are studying at a majlis, right? So how you would be in a majlis, that is how you would be uh, uh, online. But if you're unable to give the full adab, then don't fall short of at least gaining the knowledge. 
because some people sometimes they, they feel that they can't have the full adapt you know of learning online so they don't even learn in the first place so of course that is even a worst case in a, that is always a worse in a, a situation where you're not even learning right so you might as well put it on right? so even if you're on your way to school on your way to work like, you know especially our young ones now and they're wearing a uniform you know they're not they're all right, it's not covered or you know all the adults are not there it's okay as, as long as it's not haram uh, it's not haram it's just that it's lacking adam it's not haram so at least they're learning something Right, listen to something. So if you're on your way to work, whatever it is, right, at least you're or you're cooking, anything that you're doing in, in the house. As long as you're not like in the toilet trying to wash the toilet or whatever, like, you know, have it. They, but there, there was uh, mashallah, um, there are two brothers, uh, Habib Tahir bin Husin bin Tahir and Habib Abdullah bin Husin bin Tahir. Right, they're brothers, right, and they were orphans, right. They were they were looked after by their um by, by their auntie, and right? and they would be so. Uh, careful with that time that when one brother was eating the other brother would be reading books to that first brother right? and when the other brother is eating then the other brother would read books to the other brother so they never waste time so in our time to follow their way like when you're eating you don't just eat like that you can just you know uh, on something right? and listen I know my mother every morning when she cooks <laughs> when, she, when she cooks uh, the food for us she has like Hamda Yusuf she Hamda Yusuf or she like Sheikh um Sometimes Yusuf right, is on uh, is on her 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 phone right or she owns uh, she Abdul Hakim Murad and she's all inside different different. And every morning I'll, I'll listen and say who's this eh? And she guess guess who? <laughs> yeah, I'll just guess which is the she who's speaking. You know, mashallah. Right, so I mean, and don't waste your time. And, and we are in a time of technology, right? So you can very easily put something on. Right? At least uh, azkar. You know, at the very least azkar. Right? So so do put in azkar if to remind yourself to do your zikr. Um, another question, right? What can we complain to Allah by saying, Ya Allah, I'm too tired to live in this world anymore? Okay, this is from a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whereby he said, If anyone has, got, has grown tired or sick of this world right, and they desire death, let him not dua for death, right? But let him dua, Ya Allah, increase me in my life right, for as long as there is goodness in my life and take me for as long as taking me is better for me. Because right, you never know. Right, that that you know, which is better for you to be to to, to stay alive, right? Or uh, uh because even to get out of this world, so you don't know how soon how is it going to be in your in your grave then. <laughs> right. So it, I mean, Subhanallah, that, that is a dua, and you can find the dua in Riyadus Salihin. The Salihin Rasulullah made it, uh, taught the Sahaba how to make this dua. Right. So don't uh, don't ask for death. I right? don't wish for death. Right. But ask Allah. Right. If life is good for you, if this um if life is better for you, then prolong your life in goodness. And if death is better for you, then give you a good death. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, so the ni'mah of pain. Inshallah. Um, yeah, even the ni'mah of feeling pain. Because there are people who have who are born without the sense of pain. Right, so even so, when they have cuts in their you know in their hands and everything, like they can't, they don't realize that they actually have a cut there. Right, so the thing can get infected, you know, and it can grow bigger, and it can even be a bigger problem later on. So when Allah puts pain as part of our body, it's the it's the way that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has created the creation, um, so that you know something is wrong. I right, basically the pain is your body's language telling you something's not right here. Right, so don't use this um, this limb for the time being while the body is handling it. Right, or like when you sprain your ankle. You know how you sprain your ankle? <laughs> Allah alam, I'm just saying this. Uh, when you sprain your ankle, you know, straight away people will put something cold right, on the you know on on the on the swell. Right? You know what's happening when you when you, when you sprain your ankle? When you sprain your ankle, <laughs> then you're thinking, oh, how are we doing it wrong? <laughs> you know, when you sprain your ankle, the body's automatic reaction is to pump blood there. Right, because that area needs you know more uh, more nutrition and more you know uh, basically you know uh, more antibodies you know more uh, white blood cells and so on right that part so when the body pumps blood there right the place swells lah right so because you need more blood there right and the and that place is painful because you're not supposed to use an ankle right let the ankle be until the body can handle it right and Allah has put a perfect system in our in our bodies. If only we listen right, to our bodies. Right? So if you let it be, the body will it will swell for a while, so nobody will touch. In the sense that you swells up, don't touch this. The body is handling it because there's, 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 there's a strain there. And Allahu Alam. It's of all you no know, ni'mah. It's, it's all it's all blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we thank Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has given us a perfect system right, in our bodies. And sometimes, you know, we, we tend to trust ourselves more, you know, trust other methods more than what Allah has placed in our bodies. So if you were to just observe, you know, mashallah, <laughs> I observe ourselves um, better, then we will know that all of this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, now a question on today's lesson. Which, um, uh, if there's no water hose, and we wipe our najis to dry toilet roll, and take wudu after that, our wudu and prayer is valid. Okay, if, yes, correct, you know, if there's no water, Right, and then you wipe your you 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 istinja using toilet roll, and if all the conditions that I went through today are met, right, if you have met all the conditions, yes, your istinja is sahih, right, it is valid. You can wudu and you can solat, it's all sah. But if you don't meet the conditions of the istinja that I put just now of using toilet roll, then your istinja is not sah. You can wudu and your wudu is sah, right, but Huh? Unless I wudu pakai water eh? <laughs> Wudu you use water Good point <laughs> So, hmm. so okay, Let's say if you have only enough water And you're thinking Do I use the water to istinja Or use the water to wudu So the answer is You use the water If you're unable to If you can, if you can meet the conditions of Istijma right? Means using, using tissue Then do that But if you can't meet those conditions because you doing that way, you know you can you can use the water to istinja. If if you if you can't meet the conditions, you can use the water to istinja. And so it's, it's complete istinja. Then you tayamum lah. Right? If you don't have enough, you don't have, you don't have water for wudu. Right? Then you can tayamum. But if you all if you if you can do your istijmar, you can istijmar is using toilet roll. So it's easier lah. I use the istijmar. Istinja is using uh, water. Istijmar. Is using toilet roll. I hope it's not, I'm not confusing anybody. Oh, this is toilet roll, eh? So if you start, if you can use toilet roll correctly with all the conditions valid present, then the water can use for wudu lah. If you can do it that way, right? So, um, but whether or not there is najis on your body, your wudu is sah. And it's something that people confuse, right? They say that you know if my I I had these questions uh quite a number of times, right? That if my child urinates on me. Right, and there's urine on my on my on my on my hand, right? Is my wudu sahih? Your wudu is still there. Nothing nullifies your wudu. It's just that you have najis on your hands. You cannot pray, so you can't pray because you have najis, not because you don't have wudu. Right? It's a different thing. Having najis on you and having wudu are two separate things. Right? So usually najis comes with the breaking of wudu because you go to the toilet. Right, but if someone else's najis <laughs> falls on you, or blood comes out of you, um, you know, as a cut or you know whatever, then it's najis that's on you, right? and it's not uh, the nullifying of wudu. All you have to do is go to the toilet and wash the, the najis. That's all you have to do. You don't have to uh, take wudu all over again, right? because your wudu is still there, right? So if let's say, for example, eh, <laughs> give another example. If let's say a person um is a person goes to the toilet and they find a uh, tissue. Right, and then they wipe themselves right, with the tissue, uh, <laughs> and they wipe themselves with the tissue. Um, and and if let's say, eh, if let's say the they did not meet the conditions of using tissue, so maybe um, there was water mixed in or the najis smear to other parts of the body. So can't use tissue technically, right? They, they have no other choice, right? So what do they do? They use tissue anyway because they have no water. Right, they go out, they take wudu. Right. Okay, they have wudu, but they are not clean because the najis was not clean properly. So, their prayer is not sah, not because they have no wudu, but it's because they have najis on them. If this person wants to touch the mushaf, for example, eh, if they want to touch the mushaf, can. Right, because they have wudu, even though there is najis like, at their private parts. Right, they can technic technically lah if they want to lah. They can because there is there is wudu on them. It's just that they have najis right at where the najis came out from. Right? It's not clean properly. Right? If the one who did not meet the conditions of uh, using tissue paper, I hope you can see there's a there's a clear distinguishment right between the two. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, so it, um, 
uh, so that's this this one thing, right? Uh, so 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 understand that wudu and uh, istijmar they are two different things, right? Wudu and and using the tissue is different thing, right? My and then since my friend taught me to drop a few rolls, drop in a few rolls of paper in the toilet bowl to avoid splashes. Yeah, that one I mentioned before in the last lesson, right? You can put you can put uh, tissues tissue into your into the one whereby you squat, right? So when you when you if you line the if you line the ceramic with tissue, then it will not splash. Uh, so then that one is is uh then safe lah. <laughs> it won't splash, right? So yeah, yeah, it does it does work it does work. Um, yeah, it's difficult to me if you touch your thighs, especially if you touch ceramic, splash those tiny you can't even feel anything. Okay, if you don't know, you don't know lah. Right? But if you if you do know, um, so the the question is that you know what if you can't feel it, you don't know if it has smeared or what, right? So if you if you can't, you don't feel. Right, the issue went anywhere else, right? Then you don't know lah. That is under part of you don't know, right? But if you are unsure and shak, there's a shak there. So of course, in 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 Islam, you only depend on what is yakin, right? And what is yakin? Um, okay, there there are some there are some. Uh, you can everybody can go and go on the, on the chat and you can see all the links shared about all these beaded things. You can go and buy. For, I would really buy for our kids, sir. Because you know they don't know when they really need it, <laughs> right? Um, is water gushing out from a toilet bowl considered clean for istinja? There is no najasa in the bowl. You're know, gushing out, meaning that when you flash, ah, uh, the water that is there, that water is from the pipe, right? If I'm not wrong, if it's from the pipe, and you are very, you have yakin that the sides of the toilet bowl is all clean. There's no najis anywhere that might make the water mut najis. I then that is permissible. You, I mean, not permi- I mean, you want to use the water for what? <laughs> but if lah, if you want to use the water for some reason or other, it means you want to collect that water and use it to istinja. Uh, if you find a way of doing that, then it, then if as long as you yakin that there is no najis there, I have always wondered about water in the bowl after you flush a few times. Is it considered clean for istinja? Um, yeah, that one all I would say. Shuck lah, eh? I, 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 I was was <laughs> right. The the one that is in the toilet bowl, right? I was was because unless you don't know like of the nudges that, that that is stuck on the walls of a toilet bowl and everything, you you don't know where all these things are. So for me, for me, I I was was, <laughs> I was was with that water. <laughs> um, okay, then got beaded, beaded, beaded. So many links today, mashallah. <laughs> see, I see, one, see one thing only. So many, mashallah, links. Um. Right, if your kids were to do it on the floor, okay, najis on the floor is the hukum of removing najis that is mutawasita, right, that is middle najis. So basically, the way to remove najis in fiqh, right, is that you first wipe the najis completely. There's no ayn of the najis. That means, that means there's no substance left. So no color, no smell, and no taste. Right? So you remove the, the najis completely from that part. Right, and then you can use, and then after removing it, then you can, if you want, like you can use soap whatsoever to try and clean up that part. And then you take a cup of water and you pour over that area and have the water run over the area. Right, that is to remove the najis that is taqdiri, the najis that is um that is that is not perceivable najis. Okay, that is the way. Right, so that for my 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 house, my 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 old cat muntas a lot. <laughs> Right, so every time she munta, I have to do this this entire thing lah. Wipe off her naji, then the munta, and then she was old cat, then wipe off the munta, and then and then uh, clean up the entire area, try to remove all of the color and the smell and everything, and then gonna pour, uh, pour water over that area, right? Um, so if let's say if if it was like 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 uh, urine for example, eh, like all over the place. Then the first thing that you do, these are all like <laughs> practical tips, ah. First thing that you do is you take you take tissue, right? Don't use cloth first, eh? Because the 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 najis is still there. You take tissue, um, you place it all over the najis, right? So that it will serap, right? It will absorb the najis, right? Then uh, cover your hand with a plastic. For me, a lot of experience because cats, right? Sometimes my cats when <laughs> sometimes I don't know lah. The old cat, she does things randomly here and there. Sometimes nowadays the dad I forgot that she's on the train. So she, uh, so she might urinate all over the floor, right? So put the the tissue on the floor, then that put your hand in the tish, in, a, in a plastic, in the plastic. Usually, I you do that. I put my hand in the plastics because it is um, macro and of course disgusting, lah, to touch najis directly, 
right? So you don't want to touch it directly also, right? You, I mean, as far as possible, you use a, a plastic. I mean, of course, if you clean your kids, then, you know, no choice lah, to clean them, right? But uh, then you take the, the plastic, you, you pick up then all the tissue into the plastic and you turn it inside out. Then I will take some more tissue and I will wipe again. Sampai it's very dry, right? The whole place becomes completely dry, right? And then, uh, and then I will use um, uh, soap and everything and wash the entire place. And then I will dry it up again, and then take water and pour over, right? So then it's it's clean, clean, right? So you can can solat there. Uh. Allah, um, if you got discharged, Najis, can we take wudu and read the Quran? The answer is actually yes. <laughs> like if you have um, discharge on you, you can technically, of course it's not of adab lah, but technically can. <laughs> technically, you can just go to the bathroom, right? because you're like, oh, I just changed my, my, my liner. <laughs> just changed the liner. Then now got discharged, right? And then so, so your wudu tabatan, right? Wudu is nullified, but you can go to the toilet, take wudu. Now you have wudu, but you cannot pray, right? But you can go and touch the musaf if you want to, and read the Quran if you want to. Just that when you want salat, you go and change lah the the najis. Um, let's see when you have washed yourself and see that it's clean, nothing on your liner. Then you salat, right? Then you see a bit of stain. Could it be from your, uh, your could it could be from your past motion? You have to solat again. Okay, if you are, okay, if you are, you have yakin that the najis came out during the solat, uh, then your solat uh, is is batal, right? Uh, you have to pray again lah. You have to isinja, wudu, and pray again. If you yakin, right, this is on your yakin, eh, on your certainty. Uh, if you are certain that it came after the prayer, it means you felt it after the prayer. Right, like you, maybe you cough, you know, or you sneezed, right, and you felt something come up. Right, so then you, then you know it came after the prayer. Right, then your prayer is sah lah. Right, your prayer is sah. But if you're not so sure when did it come out, then on the side of caution, eh, on the side of, of being or playing safe, it's better to go and wash again and then solat again. Right, so on the side of being or playing safe, yeah, playing safe, right, playing it safe. Okay, Alhamdulillah, we stopped there for today. Actually, I wanted to go through the the Sunnah of Prayer. Let me just go through a few. Eh? Sunnah of Prayer. So beautiful to learn about Rasulullah Sunnah. Eh? So many so many etiquettes that he has taught us. This one, come on, tidur. My cat, my cat. She comes to the class to sleep. <laughs> She has uh, the most nyanya sleep when she comes for class. She will come here and she will fall deep into sleep. Jam like the best time to sleep is during my class. <laughs> cat, cat, it's a cat. <laughs> Maybe the the sakina, eh? the like, tranquility, to all all come down and she like uh, feels so much peace here, <laughs> far from the kids. <laughs> Nobody is here except for Saza and the students and the book. So no one disturbing her over here. We are on hundred and how was the previous one? Hundred and five. Okay, so hundred and five. What was the last one that we went through? Okay. Okay. Um, Asar and Aisha. Okay, anyway. Okay, so, 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 so in number five, it is to read uh, Isuna, right? Isuna, Allah. Sunnah to read specific surahs for specified times. Right. So, for example, right, for example, subo uh, uh, on Friday. Right. Sunnah to read surah sajda and insan. And um, uh, for Friday Jumaat, right, for Jumaat. Jumat prayers. There's a sunnah to read 
uh, A'ala and Rashia. Mm-hmm. There was once, uh, uh, that, I think one of the boys who studied with us, small boys lah, that they actually dah hafal Surah Rashia because every Friday prayers they hear Surah Rashia. I saw when he said, Hal ata ka hadis ul Rashia. And then he'd be like, it is the one they read on Fridays. Uh, that means the mosque that he goes to, uh, lazim kan this. Following Russia, Aala and Russia, right? And then um, like Witir, right? To recite Kafirun, sorry, Aala and Kafirun, Aala, Kafirun, right? And then the last one is a, is a three, the last three surahs. Right? So the, so it's a Sunnah, right? Like that the last two of your Witir, you read Aala and Kafirun. First Aala, second one Kafirun. And then the last one of your witir, you do ikhlas falak nas. The last three surahs of the Quran. Let's break it. Ikhlas falak nas. Okay? Right, there is. So, 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 and, 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 there are, and there are others, etc. Right, so, uh, there are other surahs whereby it's specific. Um, the Ba'awi, they have specified, specified surahs for every solat. Right, so that you can vary in your surahs. So you don't like, macam end up reading the same thing over and over again. Or at the point of prayer, then you think to yourself, like, macam apa eh? <laughs> you know, what should I read now? <laughs> right, so, so they actually have like a, like a system of what do you read. Okay, that's 105. Then 106. Oh, 106 is to have consistency. In doing so, right? So that means all these surahs that you read, right, uh, for specific prayers, that every time is that prayer you do that surah. Uh, so it means you, you never, which I'm sometimes do, sometimes don't do, right? So it's a sunnah to like every subo Friday, Friday for subo prayer, sajda insan. <laughs> so if you can hafal lah sajda insan, and every time you do witir, you would always do the last three as ala and kafirun. So at least that one, uh, surah with uh, in the witir prayer. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, we'll stop there lah for today since we're already quite late. Okay. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa sallam. الحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة أن الله يرزقنا المنافع وعمن خاصم المسلمين ودلالة على الهدى ويسر في قلب النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وإلى أرواح معاني من مشيخنا وزبيرنا علينا وإلى حضرة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الفاتحة